welcome to this week's edition of On Come Storm Radio. A little bit late, but as I mentioned on uh, the website and the Twitter, the new Twitter account, um, when I was due to record last night, I was taken somewhat ill with an attack of arthritis, which meant I couldn't fade my faders and press my buttons and move my mouse about the place. It's still sore, but I've taken a load of morphine and pain killers and whatnot, so I should be able to get through this. If I start to slur, it's that. It means I'm dropping off to sleep. But, what have we got? Let's start with the news, as usual. Uh, Big Finish Productions will be launching a brand new audio range next year, 2014. Uh, Doctor Who The Early Adventures will be a series of four part stories starring the surviving lead cast members from Doctor Who's Black and White era. So it'll be no doctors but it'll be companions and sort of like peripheral companions I suppose. Whilst working on the lost stories we fell in love with releases like Farewell, Great Macedon and The Masters of Luxor which combine narration with dialogue, says producer David Richardson. I suggested to execute ex, I suggested to execute the producer. No, you didn't. I suggested to executive producers Nicholas Briggs and Jason Haig Ellery we should use that format to tell new stories for the first and second doctors, pushing the full cast elements in order to create big impressive productions. The scripts for the first four early adventures are now in and it's so exciting to bring the early days of the series back to life in this way. The aim is for these to feel like lost television soundtracks. The first series will comprise Doctor Who Tales and will feature an historical, a trip into outer space, a beautifully reflective character piece, and the return of a classic villain from the early years. Ooh. Big Finish have also revealed that three of its Doctor Who audio ranges will be reaching the end. Doctor Who The Lost Stories, which has just been mentioned, the adaptations of the scripts which never were made, is going to end. After a short final run of stories with the first three Doctors, uh, the Gallifrey series is going to end, which featured Romana and Leela on Gallifrey. And the Companion Chronicles, the adventures narrated by Friends of the Doctor, will end in June 2014. Nicholas Briggs says it's always sad to say goodbye to something, especially if they're popular, but at Big Finish we feel we must always be moving forward and finding new ways to tell exciting Doctor Who stories in audio. Uh, I do have a view of a companion chronicle story coming up a little bit later on. So we'll listen up. Oh, here's a motorbike. Boom. Yes, I'm recording this during the day, so it is a little bit noisy outside the Von Cummenstone Media Towers. Uh, for those of you who've got a subscription with um, Big Finish Audio, it says... I'll read this verbatim because I haven't got one. But for those whose current subscriptions will leave them fewer than six releases from the end of the Companion Chronicles, we've added a four-release final season sub, so it won't be necessary to buy up to five titles at full price. Those of you who have subscriptions with Big Finish Audio will know what that means. So if you want more details, have a look at Big Finish Audio, which is www.bigfinish.com for more details. They do do a lot of other stories other than Doctor Who as well, which I've noticed. Uh, Sherlock and a whole load of things, so have a look if you're interested in anything else. What now? Google Maps have found there's been Easter egg found. Not literally an Easter egg, but a, a, like a surprise uh, for those Londoners who know Earl's Court where the exhibition centre is they will know that there is something akin to an original TARDIS standing outside it's pretty, it is an original TARDIS actually, it's a proper London police box and it's one of the few that are still around in London so if you have a look at that on Google Earth 
you'll find some sort of like arrows pointing to it and if you click on an arrow it will take you inside the TARDIS so it's it is the new TARDIS you can have a look around and whatnot swing around the TARDIS control room in a panoramic view it's <laughs> I suppose it's one of the things you'll have to do once for those of you who do want to find TARDISes in the UK or police boxes as they were there are two that I know of in Glasgow the centre of Glasgow um, one of which has been converted into like a ice cream bar type thing one of which is painted red and I also believe there is one in Glasgow St. Wolf Rail Station because the time I used to work in Scotland I had, used to have to walk past the TARDIS every day to get to the hospital and you, you've got to go and pretend haven't you even though I was 30 odd at the time uh, so what else who wise could we have as Google Earth things we have the famous quarry. In this corner we've got the third Doctor fighting Daleks and in this corner we've got the Doctor fighting Sotarans and you have to look at them all at the same time. Um, we'll go all the way by and see the TARDIS, two TARDISes next to each other, the Master's TARDIS and the Doctor's TARDIS from the Coppolis. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see Go to the, the big wheel in London and see the, uh, the nesting consciousness underneath that. The possibilities are endless. Tell me where you think there should be Google, Google Easter eggs to celebrate the Doctor on Earth. The Loch Ness Monster in Loch Ness, the Loch Ness Monster in the Thames. It's never ending. <laughs> anyway, on with it. Series 8. Right, that's who's going to write Series 8. Now it appears that there is going to be no Chris Chibnall story in the next uh, next series of episodes because he's busy writing the next series of Broadchurch. But one name which has popped up is Neil Cross, who wrote The Rings of Achaten and Hyde in Series 7. I said he's preparing for more involvement with the show i.e. Uh, writing for Peter Capaldi he says I've got a whole I've got story ideas took away but if I told you about them I'd have to kill you there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to do Stephen is clearly very busy with the 50th anniversary special and the Christmas special but I have to find out from Stephen what his intentions for the Doctor are and what sort of stories he wants me to write Although a fan of Matt Smith's Doctor and sad not to be writing for him again, the Luther creator observed about Capaldi. There's something about his physicality, his image, his wit that evokes the Doctor. There's something about him that evokes classic Doctor Who. Yes, exactly. Classic Doctor Who. We want stories of darkness and where we know the Doctor isn't always going to win and perhaps in some episodes he loses. Which is what I like, not these Disneyland runarounds with companions. Well, oh, doctor, 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 where are we, doctor? Give me a kiss, doctor, doctor, blah, 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 blah. None of this singing of things either, yeah. Although the Rings of Actikin wasn't that bad, actually. I've only watched it once when it was actually on. Um, it was a bit nonsensey with the thing about him, that the big sun which turned into the big Halloween pumpkin lantern with the angry face on. But still, do some bad stuff, Mr. Auckland Raider, Mr. Cross. We want some darkness. And another thing we can't get away from these Doctor Who episodes, supposed to lost episodes. Uh, were the episodes of Doctor Who? Was it Dad's Army and Mortman Wise? Who can't tell? Been reported that Dad's Army episodes have been found. 
but there's still nothing official about the Doctor Who ones. Um, the BBC haven't confirmed or denied, so that can be seen as that they're trying to keep the rumour mill going, which is very cheap, a cheap way of uh, keeping the thing in the paper, I suppose. I can't see it happening. I don't. I don't think we've been found anyway. But we can I just wait. Let us know what you think. Have a write on the, the Facebook site. Join the Facebook site as well. Come and tell us what you think. Uh, what have we got here? Right. This year's Comic Con, London Film and Comic Con been confirmed that the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann, is going to appear. He's going to join a host of Doctor Who guests, including Sarah Sutton, Bonnie Langford and Richard Franklin, as well as Karen Gledhill, who was every member of the Daleks, and Dick Mills of the Radio Flight Workshop, who I imagine would be very interesting. I'd like to talk to him. In fact, I would, I'd like to see the Radio Flight Workshop when it was working. That's my kind of thing. Uh, the London Film and Comic Con, which is the 2nd of 2013, will take place in the Olympia Grand Hall on the 5th and 6th of October, with the 8th Doctor in attendance on the Sunday. So that'll be the 6th. Keen fans will be given the opportunity to meet Paul McGann for an autograph and video. Yes, you do. So you can book your tickets on the LFCC website. I don't know how much they are. Um, but there you go. Now, what have we got? Yes, reviews. As promised, review for the Alchemists, the companion adventure. Here is the official trailer. Just by being in a place, you have an impact. Every little action has a consequence. Usually they're swept away, smoothed over, but sometimes you really can change history, and that's dangerous. Oh, well, brings you to Berlin, Susan. Nightlife, the boys, the politics. Science. My grandfather wanted to see the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Grandfather spun around, catching my eye as he disappeared into the car. Susan! We need to call the police. Are you sure? I'd worry about awkward questions if I were you. Foreigner, new in town, rolling in money. Straight in there with top scientists speaking suspiciously good German. Minutes later, a botched kidnap of their number one man. I'd wager they're more likely to see you as a problem than offer a solution. You don't want me dead. You wouldn't be so keen to drug me if you did. You want me alive. Yes, um, true. But I'm quite happy to hurt you to get my way. A great deal if need be. I've bought more gold, Hair Strip Matter. I need your help. The, the official trailer, hmm, The Alchemists, by, written by Ian Potter and directed by Lisa Bowerman. Uh, the blurb, the official blurb. The TARDIS lands in Berlin in the 1930s where Hitler and his National Socialist Party are in the ascendant. Some of the greatest scientific minds are gathering here, Einstein, Heisenberg, Planck, Schrodinger, Wigner, the people who will build the future of planet Earth. But the Doctor and Susan have brought something with them, something apparently harmless, something quite common, yet something that could threaten the course of history. The harmless thing is gold, brand new coins brought from a past time. I've added that bit on the end and that's all I can tell you without giving the game away. Now, the main thing I noticed about listening to this is Carol Ann Ford is now, vocally, no longer convincing in playing the teenage Susan. Unless she's been smoking 80 a day for the last 50 years. <laughs> and because it's, it's a companion adventure, she does have to do some of the other voices as well. Including the first Doctor, and her impersonation of the first Doctor is... Terrible. At times, I wondered who she being. Is she being a German, or is she being the Doctor here? 
it's a very you've got the it's the thing you've got to listen to closely to is it's the doctor speaking or is it one of the additional Germans actually which is also doing the voice of um, there's a nice throwaway joke about the scientist Heisenberg which made us laugh which that's in the first episode um, <laughs> You'll either get it or you won't get it. If you know who Heisenberg is, you will get it straight away. But in the second episode, and it's also at the end of that trailer there, there's a horrible suggestion that Susan is raped by a captor. Um, it's mentioned in that bit there. And a little bit later on as well, where she, she says there are bits of this story that I haven't told you. Um... I found that, to, maybe it's just me, but I found that to be very jarring with the rest of the story, very unpleasant. And it was like, clang, this bit sticks out, it's like, ooh, this, this, this isn't right. And if it is so, she deals with it very casually. Uh, maybe it's just me reading something into it that isn't there. But that is the big thing that struck me about this story. In all, it's an easy story to listen to. There's no real side tracks. Uh, the payoff is well done. The ending, it's a bit predictable. Um, but as usual with these big, big finish adventures, the audio recording and sound design are without fault. Just as I've come to expect from big finish audio. Uh, it's obvious that those sound engineers know what they are doing. It is literally like watching watching a television but without without a picture. And now I'm a sound engineer, so I should know what I'm talking about. Ha! Uh, it's only an hour long. Uh, two episodes. You have the split in the middle, the cliffhanger, and the split with the music. Um, so it's ideal to listen to on your iPod if you're making a short journey somewhere. That's how I listen to it anyway. Uh, back and forwards. I also want the club actually. Um, on a scale of my 1 to 100, the Uncommon Storm scale, I'll give it a 72. Basically, as it is, just a it's a straightforward romp. It doesn't have to you don't have to think about it too hard, and it's a decentish story. No surprises, apart from the nasty one which I've just mentioned. Um, a little bit of history, you'll learn a little bit of history in it about the Second World War, First World War and something which I knew about but had forgotten all about which is basically the crux of the story and a uh, little overview of how small things can change big things and a little think about what might have happened if World War II hadn't have happened and how our, our place in time is not to change things too much if we know what's going to happen, that kind of thing time lordy stuff, timey wimey well, there you go. The cast is Caroline Ford, who plays Susan, obviously, and Wayne Forrester, who plays a character called Pollitt. And the rest of the cast, I believe, are split up between the rest of them. Between them doing the rest of the cast, I mean. So it's with it being an hour long, I think it's $7.99 to buy as a CD. Or it'll be $6.99 as a download. So have a look on the Big Finish Audio uh, thingamajig website it's only uh, what's, what's seven quid these days two pints two pints for now and I was and I was enjoying you can get this one again and again there will be another big finish audio review next week I don't want to put two in one episode Excited about this. 
Now, as I've mentioned a few times before, when I was a young boy in the 70s, there was next to nothing memorabilia-wise for the Doctor Who fan. The only things I can remember were a TARDIS and Tom Baker figure, a Leela, and a 1-8 size remote controlled K9, which was very, very expensive. It used to be in one of the mail order catalogues. And I used to look at it every year and I said, oh, I want that, I want that, but it never came. It was really, really expensive. So when we wanted to play Doctor Who in the school playground, we had to make do with any old bits of stick to serve as a sonic screwdriver and go and raid your mother's wardrobe for a hat and a scarf because we did all want to be Tom Baker. Occasionally you got someone who wanted to be John Pertwee. <laughs> with the velvet jacket and the big fluffy big, big fluffy shirt. But anyway, 30 years on, I've received something through the post that had literally had us dancing about with excitement. It's finally possible to buy a genuine Tom Baker scarf. It's available from a company called Lavazi, which I've already mentioned, and it's fully endorsed by the BBC. It's an accurate reproduction of the scarf that Tom wore in the early years of the Doctor. So it's not it's not the purpley one that he wore towards the end with the big purple heavy coat, it's the earlier one with the more muted sort of autumny colours. Um, when I unwrapped it and saw it all folded up in a little plastic bag it came in, I knew this was the real thing by them colours. It would, you'd just seen them on television before, now it was here in my hand. So I pulled it out of the bag and put it around my neck. It felt very comfortable. It's an acrylic, it's not it's not scratchy, it's not made of wool like... Uh, like... Like, like sheep are made of, wool is made of sheep. It's acrylic, it's not wool, so when it gets wet it won't stretch. Um, and I know a lot of people are allergic to wool as well. Because it felt comfortable, but there was something wrong. It wasn't long enough, so I thought, ooh. Still, it looked nice, it looked the part. So then, slightly disappointed, I took it off. And I went to put it, put it, put it back in its bag. And then I realised that I still had it folded in half. It was, it was like twice as long as that. So I'm just under six foot tall and with the three wraps around the neck, the ends of the scarf still reached my ankles. So it's like 13 feet of Tom Baker look lightiness. If you cosplay as the fourth doctor you need, and I mean medically need this scarf, anyone can wear a long scarf and pretend, but this one from Lavazi is as close as you'll get without going to the ra going and raiding the costume department of the BBC. Even if you don't cosplay the scarf, it'll be an ideal gift for the Doctor Who fan in your life. Or even buy one for yourself. You won't be disappointed, I assure you. I'll be taking mine to Canada and we'll know what Canadian winters are like. I'll be walking around like nobody's business with me 13 foot long Doctor Who scarf. And as a very special offer to Oncoming Storm Radio listeners, i.e. you, the nice folk at Lavazi are also offering a deal for orders placed between the 24th of August and the 26th of August. If you mention the promotional code on Storm R, that's O N S T O R, do that again, O R O L R O N S T O R M R on the order screen, you'll get a whole 10% off the price of the scarf. You can order it from the website, which is www.lavazi.com. That is L-O-V-E-R-Z-I dot com. And that promotion is on exclusively for you listeners from the 24th of the 8th to the 26th, which is next weekend. It's over the bank holiday weekend. We do have them in stock now. I have been holding this back a little bit because they did run out of stock, but they do have them in stock now. Uh, so now's the time to buy. They really are. It really is as accurate as you're going to get. I love mine. But there you go. 10% off with the code O-N-S-T-O-R-M-R. And that is an exclusive promotion for you, the Uncommon Storm Radio listeners. And of course, tell your friends to download this if they want one. 
downloadable. I will be putting a photo up of me wearing it on the Facebook page very shortly. And I think that's about it for this week. What have we done? We've done the news, we've done a review, and another review with a fantastic special offer. What more can you want? Obviously it's August, so it is a slow it is slow for news and things. But there you go, I think I'll say good night and good luck. Thank you again to all our friends at Lavazi.com for giving us the chance to get their amazing fourth Doctor scarf at a fantastic discount. That's it. See you next week. Remember, email, Twitter. We we'll also have a Twitter account. I'll put the details on the Facebook page. And contact me if you like on Oncoming Storm Radio at. Um, no, Oncoming Storm Paul. It's a new one. Oncoming Storm Paul at Outlook.com. That is the new uh, email address. So there you go. Oncoming Storm Paul at Outlook.com. And that'll get straight to me. So thank you very much and good night. Mm-hmm.